Have you brought somebody to Jesus? Look for opportunities. I walked into this restaurant. That's a Mexican restaurant. I didn't realize that the young woman that was taking care of me, that she spoke Portuguese. She looked Spanish. And as I began to speak to her, she turned to me and said, Sir, I've seen you here a few times, a few days. And she said, are you a police officer? I said, no, I'm not. I'm more than that. I'm a minister of the gospel. She looked at me a little surprised and said, but you don't look like one. <laughs> I mean, you look good. <laughs> I look good. I know I do. Don't lie, no. Don't lie. You don't lie. And I started to, it was an open door, and I asked her, do you speak Portuguese? Are you, are you Spanish? She said, no, I, I am Cape Verde, and I speak very well Portuguese. I said, awesome, Lord, what a door. And I began to witness to her. And she said, one of these days, I'm going to visit the church. Hallelujah. And I said, God, please bring me the people that need Jesus. Bring me the people that want to open their hearts to you, Lord. We, we need to bring down the strongholds of this city. You know what the biggest stronghold in this city is? Idolatry. Idolatry is something else. Idol, idol worship is, is as bad as rebelliousness, as witchcraft. That's what the Bible says. We've got to bring down the strongholds. I went back the other day to the same place, and I said to her, you missed the service. You didn't make it. She said, oh, I know I didn't make it. I had to work, but I'm going to make it. And you see that young man sitting there? I said, yes, he's my boyfriend. I said, wonderful. Let me witness for him to him. <laughs> and I started to tell him about Jesus. He said, wow, I really want to go to this church and visit. Hallelujah. And he spoke Portuguese, praise God. Very young man, 20 years old. Has gone, I, from, my, from what I understood, his, his dad is very rich. He's like a judge in, in, Puerto, in, uh, in uh, Cape, Ver Cape Verdean. And, uh, and what, a wit what a time that I had. I said, God, that's what I need to do. I need to bring people to Jesus. When you do that, you will feel such a joy. I will never forget one day I'm in my, in, in my work and I'm in the office and there's about four or five guys there. And I began to, to witness about Jesus. And some of them made fun of me. Some looked at me a little strange and they didn't want to hear it. And I spoke the gospel, told them that the only way to heaven is Jesus, not religion, hallelujah. And I walked out of that place. I will never forget it. A young man comes up to me, touches my back, and said, you know what? I heard what you said. I want you to come over to my house and witness to my girlfriend because I live with her. I want you to tell her about Jesus. And I went there, and I told her about Jesus. She refused it. You know what happened? He left her, and he became a Christian. <laughs> Hallelujah. I could see, I could sense the hate in this young woman for me because I was doing something. I was disrupt, I was disturbing the kingdom of Satan, the darkness. And then all the Bible says, Hallelujah. Do we are the light of the world? Hallelujah. When we are, if we are the light of the world, where do we put our lamp? Underneath some some chair. No, he put it up so everyone can see. The world needs to know that there is a God that saves. There is a God that's real. I know that he died, but he's alive. In three days he rose. He's conquered hell and death. And the Bible says he has the keys of hell and death in his hands. And the door that he opens, no one can close. And the door that he closed, no one can open. The Lord wants to heal you. The Lord wants to raise you up. Shut up, I come to up. Enough is enough. Take the bull by the horns and realize that the word of God is on your side. Use the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I'm not even going to preach. I'm just going to just minister to you tonight. 
The Bible says, Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow, they don't reap, but yet your heavenly Father feeds them. How much more are you to God? You're more valuable than any bird. You're more valuable than anything on this earth. The Bible says, hallelujah, that a soul is more than the whole world. Did you understand what I said? One soul is more precious to God than all this universe that you see. Hallelujah. Jesus said, look at the lilies of the field. They don't work. Look at them. They don't sow. But yet even Solomon does not dress as splendid as they do. Look at the woman, the widow woman. They're coming for his sons. They're going to take the sons away. She's about to die. She said, there's nothing left. My husband is gone. I have no one to turn to. The one that supplied what I need is gone. But she was wrong. The one that really supplies everything you need is not your husband. It is God. Jehovah Jehovah. I don't know what you're going through, but I know who I serve. I don't know what's happening in your life, but I know that the God that I serve knows it. And the greatest provider is here tonight. I don't know what you need, but God is asking. So before God can do something for you, he wants to see your faith. What can you give God? What do you have in your hand that God can use? I just have a little oil. I don't have very much. Give that little to God, and God will multiply it. Do the same thing that that little boy did. He had three loaves and five fishes. Hallelujah. He said, here, take it. I don't know what to do. I know there's a lot of people, but give it to the master. Give it to the king of kings. Give it to Jehovah, the provider. Hallelujah. And he will supply it. God wants something from us. He, he, will, he will test us. Test is one thing. The tempt is another. The test is to see if you know what to do. You know, there's, 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 this, this, this misunderstanding that why God accepted, received the gift of Abel, but not of Cain. What was the difference? I believe that both them brought what they, the best that they had. The difference was the ingredients, and the attitude. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. The difference was the ingredients and the attitude. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that both of these young men were born in the same home. They were taught the same Christ. They were taught the same sacrifices. They must have said, listen, sons, let me tell you something. If you want to come to the presence of God, the Bible says you can look it up in Genesis. There came a day. In other words, there came a day when they were responsible and they needed to present themselves to God. The day is coming that you and I will present ourselves to God. What do you have as a sacrifice for him. God wants you to sacrifice something. What, Pastor? The best that you have. Usually you always bring the littlest to God. We give him the little time. Our gifts, you just use it every once in a while. We use it more for the world than for God. Am I right? The Bible says, that Cain was a tiller of the ground. Let me tell you something. How can something that's been cursed be used for sanctifying? Tell me something. Many of us are bringing things to God that God says, no, I don't accept. I rebuke it. You're bringing me the worst of this world. You're bringing the little that you have anymore. You have no more time for me anymore. You, you, you pray five minutes and you're gone. But yet you stay in front of your TV two hours or three hours. Am I right, church? Am I right? But yet we want God to move. How is he going to move? The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and everything else. I mean everything. I mean everything will be added unto you. But the problem is, we give them the least that we have. 
Bible says that God received Abel's sacrifice. Why? There's a lot of argument because of that. I truly believe I have the answer. Where do you find the answer? In the Bible. In the Bible. The Bible says by faith. <laughs> I like that. In other words, he heard. He, somebody told him, this is what you got to do. You got to bring the best. You got to bring something with blood. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. Do you understand? You've got to give the best. Don't just take anything from your home. Don't just use anything that's there. But give them the best. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that Abel went to the best. Hallelujah, and he took the best that he had. And the Bible says that the Lord was pleased. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because he did it by faith. He believed. And when you believe, you obey. Am I right? When you truly believe, you obey. He did it by faith, and he used the right ingredients. There was not, God would never, would never receive a gift that's been cursed. The Bible says the ground has been cursed. But an animal is a different story. An animal was created by God was pure, was innocent. The Bible says that Adam and Eve sinned. And what was the first reaction that they did? Many people are doing this today, even in churches. They're hiding behind the benches. They don't want to be seen by nobody. I'm just, leave me alone. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. God needs you. There's a kingdom to be working. God is calling you and I out. It is time to do something. Use the talents that God has given you. And if you don't know what they are, ask God. He'll show you. He'll show you. I will never forget. When the Lord called me into the ministry, I said, God, I'm not going to be a man. I don't want to be a minister, God. I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to take care of people, God. People are difficult. Let me say it again. Let me say it. People are difficult. This one comes into the church. Oh, it's too cold. Bring that thing down. The other ones are so hot. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it down. Am I right? Hallelujah. Oh, the service was good today. I didn't like that. And they said, listen, I could care less whether you liked it or not. I'm tired of it. The sound wasn't that great today. You know? a, then do something about it. Go buy a better sound. What are we doing? We come into his house to worship. The Bible says come into his presence with what? Thanksgiving. But yet we come in here sometimes bitter. You know what? I can't say I didn't even look at her. She didn't even look at me. She, she, what a shame. I may not see you, but God sees you. You know what really matters? It doesn't matter if the pastor doesn't see you. What matters is God watching me. Is he pleased with my life? Am I bringing the right sacrifice? Is my worship to him? Or is it just a show? A certain preacher invited a minister, and he said, I'd like to come to the church and preach. He said, well... Pastor, let me just tell you this. When I go there, I need a hotel room. I need room service. I need a towel. I need a cup of glass of water in the pulpit. And I need this, and I need this, and I need this, and I need this. The pastor said, okay, if that's the day, I'm going to tell you what I need when you get here. I need people to be healed. I need salvation. I need people to repent. I need people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He heard the sound of the telephone. Why? Because people are looking for their own and not for the things of God. What's the difference between Abel and Cain? Cain did his own thing. Abel did what God wanted. Let me say it again. Let me say it. Abel did what God wanted, but Cain did what he wanted. What are you doing here? What are you presenting to God? Are you giving to God what God has asked of you? Bible says... Then in chapter 22 verse, and you read on, it says, God 
tested Abraham. Let me, let me, God, God will test you. He is not going to induce you into sin. That's not what I'm saying. He's not going to tempt you to sin, but he will test you. He will come to you and test you to see if you really, really, really love him. And the Bible says, he said, Abraham, take thy son, thy only son. He didn't have two, three, four. He had one now. He said, thy only son. Bring him to Moriah. Bring him to the Moriah. I will show you the mountain where you're going to sacrifice. I don't know about you, but it's very difficult very difficult thing to do. It's a very, but you know what the Bible says? I love what the Bible says. Read the Bible. Don't read the Bible. They, 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 they bring their own conception. Read the, the Bible says that Abraham believed even if his son died that God could raise him from the ashes. Wow! In other words, listen, I'm going, I'm going to do what God says. You know why? Because I know my son is coming back home with me. <laughs> You know what he said to the servants? You guys stay here because you guys don't really believe. Another thing, you don't have a relationship with him. I know what he wants. I know what to do. There are people that need to stay, and you got to keep going. Don't let them hold you back. Sometimes you got to let some people stay aside. They're not helping you. They're holding you. Friends that hold you back. Women, wives that hold their husbands. I know a couple that that's happening right now. He wants to go to church, but she finds a million excuses not to go. I, I, I got to take care of my, my mess, my, my grandchildren. Your grandchildren, let the mother and father take care of them. I'm going to go to the house of God. I come out of the house of God. Once I've worshipped the Lord, then I can go and see God. The Bible says, Abraham got tested. I, I, God wants to know what you really mean. Actually, he knows what you're made of. He wants you to know it. God does everything for us. He doesn't do it just to make himself look good. He's already good. He doesn't do it because he's actually, he's already awesome. Amen. My God is awesome. I don't know about your God, but mine is awesome. Everything for me. He does everything for his glory in my life. The Bible says all things work for the good of those that love God. But it doesn't say that there's something for every person. No, 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 no. He loves you, but he's going to want something from you. He wants to do his will in your life. Abraham. <laughs> you, know, you know what's so funny? The Bible doesn't say he went to his wife. You know what? The Lord told me to sacrifice her son. I don't, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible, doesn't say that. The Bible simply, just simply says he, the next day, the three, <laughs> he woke up in the morning, got everything prepared, called his son. Let's go, bro. We're going to go worship God. Where are you going, Dad? We're going to go sacrifice unto the Lord. I can imagine Isaac. If Isaac was a Christian, I believe he was. Because my, 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 the Bible says they all went, huh? let's go. And, and you know what the Bible says? Three days after. Listen, listen, three days. Three days, he's going to rise. Three days, he will supply. Three days, he will bring life. He Three days, he resurrected. Hallelujah. And he said, I have the keys of hell and death. And you know what he said? I give you power. I give you authority to use these keys in my name. Can you imagine? Your only son. And the Bible says, it's not walking. Three days, he sees, sees the mountain where God shows him, this is where you're going to sacrifice your child. Mount Calvary. Because Isaac is a type of Christ. Did you get it? You see, God was saying, I am the provider. I'm the one that will provide for your sin. I have the provision 
can forgive you. I have the precious blood that will be spilled. The Bible says we were not bought with silver and gold. Do you understand that? We were bought with some precious thing. What was it? The holy blood of the Son of God. And Isaac grabs the wood. <laughs> Jesus also grabbed the wood called the cross. And he walked over to that Calvary. And I can just see Abraham. Oh, God, I'm trusting you, Lord. And I know you're not going to let me down. All of a sudden, the son stops and says, Dad, yes, son. I know we have the wood. And I know we have the knife. Because I see it. I'm carrying the wood. But <coughs> where is the sacrifice? Those things that are impossible to you is possible to God. What you cannot provide, what this world cannot provide, what the kingdoms of this world cannot provide, the governments of this world, my God will provide. What do you need? The Bible says, whatever you want from God, the Bible says, you will have. If you believe, you will receive. Obviously, whatever you want, that will glorify God. And the son turns to the father and says, Dad, I see the wood, I see the knife. Where's the sacrifice? And I love Abraham. That's faith. Faith has to be seen before it happens. No, 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 you didn't get it. The Bible says that you can only please God by faith. In other words, you need to believe before it happens. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God is so good. Hallelujah. Let me say, God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I don't know what you need, but God is here to provide it for you. All you have to do is reach out by faith. The woman said, if I can just touch him, all I have to do is touch him. I don't have to talk to him. I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is just touch him. And I don't even have to touch his body because he's got so much power, even in his clothes. If I just touch the him, touch the him, I will be healed. How do you get faith? Two ways. Hear the word of God. What else, Lord? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How do I get more faith? Do the same thing that that woman said, Lord, or the, young, the man said, help my unbelief. In other words, help my faith. Raise my faith up. Bring it up, Lord. Because God can do it. God can make you believe. Oh, sure they come to Lava When I first met my wife, I looked at that woman. Oh, my God, is one good looking girl. Oh, my God. Oh, and I had a friend of mine that lived with me. And I came home one day. I think he was going to be happy like I am. And I said, You know what? I asked so and so out. And she said, She wants to be my girlfriend. I'm a hot. Them on you. I come against you in the name of Jesus. My God, people don't get happy with you. They want to put you down. They want to drag you out. They don't want to believe with you. You're going to go with the pastor's daughter? You? You that cleans toilets? That's what I used to do before. When I first started the pool, I'd clean toilets. And you know what I heard when I came to the Lord? I'd clean those toilets singing it for the Lord. And people would walk into the bathroom. And then after that, God just rose me up. I became a chemical tech by God's grace. I said, Lord, if you can do it for him, you can do it for me. Lord. You can give me the ability to do this job. Hallelujah. But that's another story. I came home. And the guy lived with me. I opened my door for him. He lost everything. I put him in my house. Don't you think he would say, wow, I'm wonderful, Manny. That's great. I'm happy for you. 
she was a wonderful woman. No, you stole your girl. Why? Because faith does not have any fear of anything. Faith, hallelujah, non ti sumi. How do you say sumi? Por favor, me ajude. Jealousy. There's no jealousy with faith because if God can do it by him, he can do it for me. He's no respecter of persons. Stop looking at yourself as a mini little guy, but look at yourself as a giant for the Lord and say, I'm a child of God. Ah, my name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. I have authority. Hallelujah. Not only was my friend against me, but my pastor was going to leave. He said, You? You're going out with you? Your Portuguese is awful. And it was awful. <laughs> you? Ele falou em português, ele falou assim, tira o cavalo da chuva, rapaz. In other words, take the horse out of the, wa- out of, out of the rain. In other words, fix it. You know what I said to him? I said, you know what he said to me? She's going to be deported. I said, I don't give she's deported to the moon. I'll go get her there. Because my God will bring me there. Oh, she'll be deported. Don't worry about it. You know, they, 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 they came here. They came here legally. But there was a man, a liar, that lied to them. You know what I'm saying? That's promised one thing but did another. You understand what I'm saying? But God... <laughs> What, what the enemy meant for bad, what the enemy meant to end it, God turned it for the good. That's the message. <laughs> you know what my wife used to say before? I didn't know this. She told me after. She said, every time I prayed, I said, Lord, give me a man that will carry me and not me carrying him. I carry my wife in the name of Jesus. Woman of God. Hallelujah. He said, forget it, pal. I said, listen, the same God you serve, I serve. Maybe you have a bigger name than me, but to him it don't mean very much. It's faith that God wants to see. Let me just tell you and end with this. There's so much. I mean, there's so, God is putting so much in my spirit right now. As I asked my, before I asked her, one day I, I used to go to her house. We used to have chorus, singing a chorus group for young people. And she was the teacher. And I was the pupil. And I'd go there. One day I walk in. Oh, are you from there? Come in. I mean, I'm a teacher. I knew the Bible very little. I was just beginning in the Lord. And this guy had muscles coming out of his nostrils. I mean, the guy was handsome. The guy was good looking. He came from Lisbon. Oh, I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> Beauty little guy. You know what I'm saying? And he, wow, I said, my God. And he was talking to her. And then and Daniel did this. And da- I didn't even know there was a Daniel. Daniel did that. I said, my God. I don't even know who Daniel was. And Daniel fasted for so many days. And the answer didn't come after 28. You know I don't know who Daniel is, but my God, how, how can I compete against this monster? I mean, the guy was good looking. He knew his Bible, but he had one thing that failed him. He didn't live for the Lord in his own heart. He was in a Bible school, went to Bible school, but he was having sex with every dick and Harry that he could find. What happened? Until one day he said to my, my wife today, he said, you know what, Esther? Here. She said, Esther, I have a problem. He says to her, I didn't know this, I found it out. She said to him, Then you got the wrong girl. You better move on because you're not going to touch me. Because I'm only going to be touched when I marry you. Baboos! Big dummy! I got the blessing. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Isaac turns to his dad. He says, Dad, 
I, I know the wood is here. I know the knife is here. Where is the shepherd? I love what Abraham said. God will provide the shepherd. And they get up there. And I read it today. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even see that young man. Why? Because he represented the Lamb of God, which the Bible says he was taken to the slaughterhouse. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor turns to him and says, don't you realize? Look at all the accusations. Look at all. Aren't you going to defend yourself? Are you the king of the Jews? You said it. You said it! And then there's a man, his name is Barabbas. Barabbas. Barabbas in Portuguese. I used to preach better English than Portuguese. Now I'm preaching better Portuguese than English. Oh my God. As long as you're not, Lord. Barabbas. The Bible says it was a custom that they would set someone free. You would think they're going to set Jesus free. You know why? Because the Bible says the governor knew that it was all because of him. See, jealousy can make you kill somebody. Be satisfied with what you have and give thanks unto the Lord. Maybe my car is not like yours, but I still have a car. My house is probably as pretty, not as pretty as yours. I've seen your house, but it's still my house, and I'm so glad that yours is beautiful, huh? Almost as beautiful as yours. You understand me? All in the spirit of God. Please understand. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, let God supply what you need. Men will fail you. Pastors will fail you. Friends will fail you. Mom and dad will fail you. The government will fail you. But God will never forsake you. Let me end with this. They go up to the mountain. He puts his son on the altar. The Bible doesn't say that he scrambles at that. Don't do this. Please don't do this. He came up. Man, that's pretty, pretty, that's pretty cool. I don't know about you. If I was 18 years old, Dad, you're going to sacrifice me here? Bye. I'll see you later. I'll see you down the mountain. But I know. But this guy, he was a lover of God. I'm talking about the young man now. He said, I trust my dad. I, I know my dad. <laughs> he said, Does your son know that you have a relationship with God? My, my son knows it. He says, Dad, I know you do. This guy knew that his dad had intimacy with God. They walked. He was a friend. The Bible says he calls a what? A friend of? And the Bible says he grabs a knife and he's about to kill his son. Because he was going to do it. Why did I say he was going to do it? Because he believed. The Bible says he believed that even if he killed his son and he burnt his son, because that sacrifice had to be burnt, and he burnt his son up, he, would believe, he believed that God could raise him from the earth. The Bible says he's about to do it. An angel said, Abraham, don't do nothing. Don't do any harm to that child. For I, now I know that you love me, that you will not spare anything that I ask of you. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying give God what he asks. Don't give him what you want, but give him what he wants. The Bible says that Abraham turned around and he saw a ram caught in the bushes. What is that? That is the provision of God. What is that? That is Jehovah Jireh saying, I will take care of everything. Whatever you need, I got it. 
You need a healing? I got it. <laughs> you need salvation? I got it. You need money? Barabbas, Jesus, the governor said, he's the judge. And he wants, the Bible says he wanted to set Jesus free. That's what the Bible says. In fact, the Bible says his wife had a dream that she couldn't sleep all night. But I believe Jesus had slept all night. <laughs> Woo! And the wife says, do, do, do I have nothing to do with this just man? This man is just. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Happen hell. And you know what happens? You know the story. Jealousy. Listen to me. It's so shameful that leaders can sway people. The leaders, the Bible says that the leaders sway the people to set Barabbas free. When leaders can sway a church to do what's wrong, we're in big trouble. We are in big. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you think you were saved? Do you think you were saved? You were a liar? You were a thief? Grab Jesus, but I never stole anything. But if you desired it in your heart, you'll get it. The Bible says if you look it upon a woman and you lust after her, you committed it. Thank God that what the devil meant for wrong, God turned it for good. <laughs> Give God a glory. Come on. Let us stand, please. Stand. Please, I just want to finish this and say to you that Jehovah Jireh is here. He's not far from you. He's right next to you. I, I don't know what your need is. And it doesn't matter to me because I cannot supply it. But the God that I'm preaching about is here. And he's able to supply. The Bible says he's able to do more than what you can think or dream of or ask. Why? Because he's the creator. He created you. And he knows what you need. He will supply what you need. Hallelujah. He, he, listen to me. God is joyful when he sees his children receive gifts from him. God is a good God. You see, he wants to give you things. As long as you give it back to him. Let me say it again. As long as you give it back to God. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying as long as you do it for the glory of God. God, bow your heads, please. Let's pray. I feel that God wants to give someone a present tonight. If you can believe it by faith, and, and by faith, just do, do this, by faith, look, look, just do this. Now. Put your hand up. By faith. <laughs> One day I, I prayed for someone. She said, oh, Pastor, I, I feel somebody putting something in my hand. It wasn't me. I, I was far away from her. But God was putting something in her. God is sending angels right now. And you will, feel the, you will feel the weight of this gift in your hand. Is it baptism of the Holy Spirit that you need? He gives it to you. Is it a healing that you need? He gives it to you right now. I proclaim it in the name of Jesus. Lord, let, let there be healing. By your stripes we are healed. Lord, I said by your, Lord, I am, I'm, I am prophesying according to your word. Your word said that through your stripes we are. You are the Lord that healeth us. Lord, right now by faith and according to your word and the authority of your word, heal your people tonight. Receive the healing now. God, heal your people, God. 
You're the same yesterday and forever. You don't change. 